This is the Royal Air Force Training Centrifuge at Farndra, and the team here are going to push me as far as they are allowed to push a civilian. The centrifuge has been here since 1955. The device was originally installed for research purposes, although these days it's used for training as, as much as it is for research. And what it does is recreate the forces that you feel in an aircraft. For our routine pilot training, the first time pilots go on the centrifuge, uh, we expect them to get up to 5G without a G suit and then up to 7G with an anti-G suit. Now, I'm not taking a significant risk here. I'm healthy, I've pulled a few Gs before, and the human body can take this. And the reason we know that is because in the 1950s, the US Air Force used rocket sleds to push volunteers to incredible speeds. But that rocket-powered acceleration wasn't the dangerous or even the really high G part of the test. See, high G acceleration takes a lot of incredibly expensive rockets or a big old centrifuge like this. But high G deceleration? All you need for that is a wall. Or for something less destructive, like the rocket sleds, you use scoops dropped down into a water trough. US Air Flight Surgeon John Stapp, aboard the rocket sled Sonic Wind No. 1, holds the record for the highest sustained G-force anyone has ever voluntarily endured, 25G for 1.1 seconds, with a brief peak over 46G. And he was badly injured, but he survived and he recovered, and he lived to the age of 89. The human body is an incredible thing, particularly because we didn't evolve for this. G tolerance is something that's innate in all of us. Some of us have high G tolerance, some of us have low G tolerance. Over the years, people's G tolerance doesn't really adapt. Any shortfall in G tolerance has really got to be made up by physical exertion in the G-straining manoeuvre. What the centrifuge doesn't have is much jerk. And jerk is a technical term. In the same way that acceleration is the rate of change of speed, jerk is the rate of change of acceleration. And because it takes time to spin up and spin down, oh, here we go. Even though the acceleration is high, the jerk here is relatively low, about 1g per second. Jerk is the difference between a rocket to space, which, uh, which might take a couple of minutes to reach peak acceleration, and a fighter jet, where manoeuvres might change the g-force acting on you in a fraction of a second. And it can go further than that. You can measure the rate of change of jerk, which is called snap or jounce. Uh, the two derivatives after that are called crackle and pop, but they're not all that useful in the real world. As we increase the G that Tom is exposed to, the blood's going to be pushed down into his feet and he's going to have to work really hard to push that blood back up to feed oxygen to his brain to keep him conscious. And in real life, we would be expecting that person to be flying an aircraft uh, whilst doing that. I'm getting a little bit of grey out. I can't quite see. Ah. We teach the anti-G straining manoeuvre, which composes of two separate parts. First of all, muscle tensing, so both the buttocks and the legs, squeezing the blood vessels to try and get the blood back up into the chest and the head. But also the second part is a breathing manoeuvre, uh, which uh, increases the strain in the chest, directly increasing the blood pressure to the great vessels in the chest and keeping him conscious. And when you lose blood pressure to your head, you could even lose consciousness, and we term that G-induced loss of consciousness, or G-lock. Blimey! I lost everything there! Wow! G-lock in itself is not dangerous, but the real point is when you G-lock, you're flying an aircraft. So if you're not able to fly that aircraft, I'm, I'm sure you can appreciate that that is a, a real problem. Because of John Stapp and all the volunteers like him that rode the rocket sleds, there is a lot of research ah, into acceleration on the human body. How many Gs can be withstood? for minutes at a time. How many Gs can be withstood for brief moments and how many can be withstood with training that I clearly don't have? Rocket scientists and roller coaster designers use that data, but there's not much research into jerk because how do you test it without also testing acceleration? Over on the Starship channel, I am not passing out pulling Gs with the Blades aerobatic team. And as for this video, thank you so much to all the team at the RAF Center of Aviation Medicine, to the team at Kinetic and to the team at Starship.